All right, okay, so um, in the last video we, we, we developed a definition of information and the idea that systems that um, can exist in a finite number of distinct states generate information by selecting one of those states and by ruling out the other states and that the amount of information is proportional um, to um, the amount of states that are ruled out. So quick test, uh, have a look at this. Um, so how much information is encoded by this number here, the number one? Now, I'll give you a couple of seconds to think about this. So if your answer is one bit, you might be right. If your answer is more than one bit, you also might be right. If your answer is no information, you also might be right. How much information is encoded by this one depends upon how many states are ruled out. So if it's either a choice between one or zero, then it encodes one bit of information. If it's a choice between one and two, nine, zero, whatever, um, then it's more than one bit of information. More than a bit. If it's a, simply a choice between one and one, i.e. there is no choice, uh, then there's no information there. You don't gain any information by learning that the system is in state one because it's the only possible state. So, so this hopefully emphasizes the idea that you cannot say simply um, by looking at a state of a system how much information is actually encoded by it. You need to know how many states are ruled out uh, in order to quantify the amount of information. Okay, so let's move on. So, okay, so look at the board. So here we've got um, a system that is composed of system uh, that is composed of sim simple two-state systems. So we have a um, basically two units. We can unit one and unit two. Um, actually, no, let's not call it unit one. Let's call it system one, system two. I think it's better. I'm calling it system so far. System one and system two. So each of these systems can exist either in the blue state or the yellow state. Um, we can equivalently um, describe the blue state as being state zero and the yellow state being state um, uh, one. And so whilst each of the systems can only exist in two possible states, by combining these systems, we can create a larger system that can generate more information. So in the case, uh, in this case, where we have two of these systems together, so they are you know, brought together, illustrated by the dotted line, the system can now exist in four states, state one, blue, blue, state two, yellow, yellow, state three, blue, yellow, or state four, yellow, blue. And we can use the blue and yellow coding. We can equally, uh, equivalently, we can um, label it as 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, or 1, 0. The key point here is that we have, um, we have combined simple systems to generate a more complex system uh, that contains more states so that we can encode uh, more information. And as we will see later, this is exactly what the brain does. Okay, so now we've brought together three of these systems. So we've got S1, S2, and system three. And again, each can exist in uh, the blue state or the yellow state. 
Um, but of course, this time there are a larger number of possible states. There are now eight possible states. Um, zero, 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 or blue, 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 yellow, or zero, zero, one. Uh, zero, one, zero, i.e. blue, yellow, blue. Yellow, blue, blue, I'm losing track myself now. One, zero, zero, um, one, zero, one, 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 zero, uh, zero, one, one, or one, 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 yellow, yellow, yellow. So by bringing together three two-state systems, we can now generate uh, a system with, with many more, uh, a, a much larger number of states, which means we can create more information. Um, okay, so hopefully that's cemented the idea that you can bring together simple uh, two-state systems um, to generate systems with much more, many more states and thus actually encode and generate much more information. Um, and as we will see, that's, that's what the brain does. Now, finally, before we move on to the next unit, um, let's look at how we actually, we can reduce the number of states in a system in order to actually constrain the amount of information um, that it generates. And, and that's a slightly odd idea at this point in time, but when we start talking about how the, the brain generates information later on, um, this, will, uh, this will make sense. So you just have to kind of bear with me at this point in time. So here we've got a, um, a system that, uh, that contains two smaller systems, so system one and system two. However, by connecting these systems together um, in this way, whenever system one is in the blue state, it automatically causes system two to also be in the blue state. Likewise, whenever system two is in the blue state, it causes, because it's connected, uh, system one to be in the blue state. So in other words, a blue-yellow state is not possible, and neither is a yellow-blue state. These are not possible because likewise, whenever um, the system is system one is in the yellow state, it causes system two to be in the yellow state and vice versa. Whenever system two is in the yellow state, it causes system one to be in the yellow state. So we've taken, now it might seem a little strange or difficult to understand why we've done this um, because this is a very, very simplified example. Um, but what we've done is we've taken a system that in the previous example um, contained, if we actually go back and have a look. Um, so here we, ha we actually was able to generate a system that contained four states by bringing together um, two um, simpler systems, but by connecting them together, meaning that they, in they directly influence e each other these states are simply not possible. So we've reduced the number of states that the system can occupy from four states um, in the original system down to two states. So we've been able to sculpt, if you like, the amount of information that the system can generate by forming connection between these smaller, simpler systems. Um, now, when we start thinking about um, the structure of the brain and how the brain generates patterns of information from large assemblies of neurons, this idea of constraining information by forming connections between um, systems, in this case, the systems will be uh, sm um, small networks of uh, neurons called cortical columns, but that's for a future unit. Um, the reason why I've stressed this and, and gone through this should hopefully become clear. Okay, so finally, 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 let's return to our uh, neurons. So kind of pointing in the direction again of the brain. So here we have a set of spike trains and you know exactly what these are now. So each of these, of course, is a spike. It is a 
action potential. And hopefully now it should be a little bit more clear as to how and why this generates information. So when, when people teach action potentials and teach the idea of neural information, they often think, they often refer to the binary, uh, the digits of binary code and liken, for example, a, an action potential as being like a, a one. When, when the neuron fires, it's like a one. When it doesn't fire, as periods of being quiet, it's like a zero. And so you can start to see how the neuron is generating quite complex information by either firing an action potential or not firing an action potential. So in this case, the neuron essentially is acting as a two-state system. It either fires an action potential or it remains quiet. When it remains quiet and does nothing, that contains as much information as when it fires an action potential. So an, uh, a neuron, by generating large numbers of these action potentials uh, in a specific pattern, is able to generate large amounts of information. Kidding. Uh, however, if um, if you do want to support the production of future courses, or you just want to leave a tip, um, then there are virtual tip boxes below. There's PayPal, Kofi, or Kofi, whatever it is, even a Bitcoin address. If that is your thing, minimally, please like and subscribe. It really helps me. And please follow me on Twitter and Instagram if you use them. Alien Insect. And I think that's about it. I hope you're enjoying the course. Thank you.